It seemed like nobody really liked us all year. It was like lopped in against the world, you know? We just knew that we had to end their season that day or else it would come back and bite us. It's a couple minutes after noon. This group of young men with Chris coaching it, and they've certainly been a fun to, fun to watch. We, we got to get an update on this Wapton Post 20 documentary, The Boys of Summer. There's just something about this team. We're talking baseball, Boys of Summer. What a great opportunity. I mean, they respect the game, and I think it's been brought up in these guys that that's what they need to do. I've been playing baseball ever since like T-ball, probably younger, but probably my love for it came right after the first state championship that we won. You know, I just fell in love. And in the big picture of things, it's more, it's more than baseball. And we talk about it all the time. We're, we're trying to create young men here that are going to be productive citizens in this world. It's just the way they treat people. That's just the way they do it. You know, it's like some things are just that way, well, they're just that way. Here, it's down home. What a year to document it all. The summer of 2023 was indeed a golden season for Legion Ball in Wapiton.
A Wahpeton baseball team has made it to the Babe Ruth World Series. The entire team is with us today to talk about their experience getting to this point. So let's start with Coach Chris over here. Tell us about, now that this is all settled in, how are you guys all feeling right now? You must be so excited. Uh, the guys are extremely excited. To, to play in the tournaments we've played in and be able to win those, um, you know, they're calm, they're collected. Um, they don't get nervous in the games. They're probably more nervous standing up here right now than any <laughs> game we played in. So this group got together, started playing together as 10 year olds. And um, so for five years, you know, we've put in a lot of work. Um, they're very coachable young men. Um, they're very educated, very smart in school. And uh, there's a big correlation to that. And uh, our assistant coach, uh, Mr. Hawker here behind me, um, he's the principal in the middle school, so he can certainly vouch for that. So. It's really just a close family because I remember when I when I was 10 years old, I didn't really want to play baseball, but then, you know, all these guys really kind of got me into it, and now I feel, you know, a lot more welcome, so it's really a, a second family, yeah. And did you guys, when you, when you first started, did you ever dream or expect to be here right now heading to this super exciting event next week? Well, if you were to tell me at, at 10 years that I was going to be here, never would have um, believed that, but, you know, being or being around these guys and you know, the talent that we all have, I think it's, yeah, it's doable. This is to recognize the post-20 uh, Legion baseball team on their state championship. Uh, Wapaton has a proud history when it comes to baseball, and this team has written one of the most uh, storied chapters in that history. Ten guys of the 16 sitting here right now played on those, the last three seasons and they went 108-19, and 19, an 850 winning percentage, the three best years ever at Lopton Baseball. Once again, I appreciate it, and, and uh, like I said, these guys have done Lopton proud. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brett Lambrecht, Mayor of Wapton. Uh, Wapton's the, the, county's, the county's seat for Richland County um, and a population of just over 8,000. Um, we just moved up to over 8,000 and we're on, the, we're on the grow. So we've got good growth going on, new housing going in and, and uh, new, new businesses going in. A lot of local attractions would be um, the Chinkapa Zoo, um, our park system, our golf course, which is nine holes in Wapaton, nine holes in Breckenridge. Kind of a unique one in the United States, only one that has nine holes in two different states. Um, our park system um, is rich with a lot of good, lot of good um, activities in there, softball diamonds, um, picnic shelters to um, a great baseball field, John Randall Field, um, and we have just uh, North Dakota State College of Science is a big attraction for people to come to and see. Giants, Giants is big, Car Cargill, um, Batterstead, we just have um, um, added, uh, they added a brand new uh, North American headquarters here, so um, it'll be a multi-million dollar building. People are here are just warm and welcoming and inviting, and they're um, always, they're, they're hardworking and they're always he and helpful. You always see that if people need a hand or the community needs a hand or communities need a hand, everybody's digging in and um, work, working together. Welcome to John Randall Field as we get ready to start this American Legion season. Wobbit in post 20 coming off of a excellent high school season starts this summer season against post 400 Comets in Wobbit most of the day around the mid 80s as the breeze comes in from right center field. On the hill is going to be Jaden King. He's the undisputed ace of this Wobbit program, the lengthy le or the lanky lefty. Hard hit ball in the center field as the center fielder misplays it goes over his head rolls to the fence Hawker rounds first Pulls in to second. 3-2 pitch to the first baseman. Delivery high, fly ball in the right field. Right fielder getting on his horse. Did not as ball rolls to the fence. Hockert scores and Ulick score. Hoffman rounds into third. So a two RBI hit by Hoffman. The delivery. Hard hit ball over the third baseman's head, rolls into left field. Schroeder rounds third, comes home. 
And the left fielder took his eye off the ball as it rolled by him. So a single by Fleetwood gets them to second on the air. And Wapiti takes a 6-0 lead. Got a lot of things to say. He's always loud, too, very verbal. You can always hear him. I'm out there at shortstop laughing to Jack at second or Timmy at third because it's funny every time. Is he like that all the time, or is there something wrong with him, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of an open question. Uh, how honest do you want me? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, Jackson, hey, Jackson's Jackson. He's got a great personality. Shout out, shout out my dad, shout out my grandma. Say something, say something. Hi. If you make an error, you owe me 10 pulls. Oh, Pinky? Right. Pinky? How about three? Three. Okay, three. Okay. All right, fine. Make an error, that's three pulls. Ready? Okay, fine. Hey, Solar, we do have. Oh, that guy would just went ass over a tea kettle over there. Can I say that? If the game's tight, you probably won't want to make me up. Yeah. Like, miss the fastball out, I'll be like. Yeah. Yeah. But when the sun goes down, on my side of town. What's your deal? I know you made an error. You, you don't have to take it out on me. The pitcher, number 23, Braxton. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Woo! You go right. No, you go left. I go left. You go middle. Okay. Love that. Freak out. Oh, I'm freaking out. Whoops. Dang. Yeah, this guy does not look happy on the mound. He's just he's just here to be here, honestly. What? This pitcher does not like me. Oh. Oh. If I walk, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. Walk. I'm sorry. I'm ready. This is our home run helmet. These are our Helmet boxes, bat rack. Uh, this is my corner. Hi, oh. boy, Bubba. We got Jack, either Jay or Gavin, I don't know. I think that's Kiggs. Capper, Tori, I think. Joey. Mm. Hey, this is your bag, right? Yeah. This is Bubba's, not who I said it was. I took his cheese, by the way. I found him. I found him. If you don't lick again, I'm going to call the ball. OK. Huh? I don't know what he said to me. He said, don't lick your fingers or something like that. I'm going to steal this one. Oh, yeah. Told you. Called it. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> it's nuts. Crazy. Come on, come on. Smash pass. Come on. Oh, get out, ball. Oh, that's gone, coach. Whoa, what the heck? I'm mic'd up, too. <laughs> That's nuts. Woohoo! Come on. Heck yeah. <laughs> Come on, baby. Where's the helmet at? We do it too often. Where is it? August. All right, watch this. Jack's got it. Hey. There we go, baby. With the freaking. Did you get the bat flip too? That's nuts. What? Oh, I, I pimped the shoot out of that one. Holy. That's crazy. That was like right on cue, too. Wait, why? Did he call it? No, I didn't. My name is Ryan Sheely. I played pitcher and left field for the 2012 uh, Central Plains Championship team. Just about every kid on the team had um, had their parents or their grandparents or their brothers and sisters, uh, whoever, hanging around the field, working concession stands, or you know their little brothers playing catch, uh, you know, past the first baseline. So it was like you, you kind of also got you got to know families as well because they were everywhere. It made you feel really comfortable going to the baseball field, whether you saw you know. The guy batting in the eight hole, you saw his parents, you'd probably say hi to him and ask him how their day was going, or they would ask how the arm was feeling from the day before. 
that's where the culture um, really started to pick up for things was when you got, got those parents involved and you got them to buy into the program and you got them to buy into the coach. On top of us playing together so much, it was also them that were pushing us like, hey, go over to your friend's house, go play with these guys, um, good luck at the game today. And um, I think that's where the culture really started to, to, to get great for Wapton Baseball. When did you first start? <laughs> when did you first start getting involved? Well, some people probably think I started in the Stone Age, but uh, it, it's been a long time, Maddie. Uh, my youngest son, Evan, started playing uh, for Coach Kappas many years ago. And, uh, and the first trip I made down here was that fall of 92, just to see what they had for a baseball facility here. And it just struck me then at that point in time because of the green wall out there. And it was just a, a, just something you don't see anymore. Usually there's advertising all over the place. But that green wall just, just made it something special. Develop that passion here to try and hopefully uh, lead people and help them do what they want to do here and, and help them succeed. So just a passion, just a passion. Welcome everybody. Uh, to Three Borders Sports Network and just an FYI we are going to be doing all of the games here for the tournament this weekend. There's going to be two today, four on Saturday and four on Sunday. And again I go back to talking about having home field advantage and I mean it doesn't get any better than playing in a big tournament at your home field. Mostly every time I get in the box I think to myself it's um, line drives make home runs. Oh, Cleveland drives that one deep to left. And that might be gone. It is over the left field wall, Jackson. Post 20 now has got a home run helmet. It's like a hard hat. Make a documentary, you have a lot of cameras on us and everything. And he just told us to not tighten up at all, just stay loose, play our ball. Just pretend like you guys weren't even there, really. Pop fly to right, and looks like Brown. So oh, I thought he had a gauge, but it went over his head. So Schroeder rounding first. Here comes Hoffman to score, and Caden Cap is right behind him. And standing on third with that speed was Gavin Schroeder. All right, I, again, we're going to see uh, Lamore and Wapiton. I think we're just about ready to go, yep. so I will uh, <laughs> hand, the mic, yeah. hand the mic over to our PA announcer, Mr. Mike Rittenauer. Doing the pitching, number five, Caden Gaffis. Batting fourth, playing right field, number six, Caden King. Yeah! to hit them is actually pretty hard so what I usually do is just try not to hit them and then they, if they go out they go out but once they go over the fence it's just like a lot of excitement that goes through your body and just making sure trying to touch all the bags. He just kind of looks like a bird when he walks with a little I mean <laughs> then we told Jaden to start doing it when he got on second and he did and I mean we all love it it's awesome gets the dugout going. And that's not gonna be caught and it bounces in front of the 372 mark. That's the relay from Ulick to Kappas. 8-6-2 on that put out for the second out. <laughs> Coaches maybe say, maybe you should have stopped. <laughs> everyone is just kind of like pissed like what happened like we just lost and we, we didn't really know what to think and we're in there and we're just like we got to bounce back but then we go out and lose another game to East Grand Forks and we're just like oh no kind of and after that we just I think we just we kicked her in second gear and we we're like it's not happening again we were shocked um, because, you know, to start the season, you know, they just got third in state. <laughs> so we thought, you know, we were going to have a great year. Um, we thought minimum losses, not as great competition. Um, we were kind of shocked. 
Um, the sky's the limit. Now they've got Tori Ulick as a super senior along with Sterling Warney back as a super senior, so you bring those two back. Foul ball glass breaking was the first one. There comes the glass breaking before I even hit the button, you know, but tournaments were always special too because, you know, you get people from out of town that had never heard that in a small town. When, we, when we're at the plate, if we pop out, we don't slam our bat, throw our bat, and start jogging. We sprint all the time. We play the game right, okay? When the game is finished, we keep our shirt tucked in until we leave the field. Get up there, good approaches, put the bat on the ball, let's swipe some bags, let's have fun, get a couple big ones now. Let's, yeah, go. let's go. No mistakes now, right? Jeez. Holy peppering me over here. Knock it down. Oh. Let's go, keep it down. Let's go. Bring it in. We better wake the up right now. Horse Throw the ball, field it, and get your head in the game. Let's go. Let's just say maybe there was a... Uh... How would you describe it, Rob? <laughs> well, let's just say that uh, Wapton's coach, Chris Kappas, he's a little intense. That, that's another storyline here. Uh, Kappas coaches kids hard. Um, you know, and in today's kind of entitlement society, participation trophy era, I call it sometimes, those kids on that team, they gravitate towards that. They kind of thrive under that. And those Wapton guys, they really eat, sleep, breathe, dream baseball. He knows we're a lot better than that. So he just pulled us off the field and he said, Get your heads out of your behinds and let's go. And Wapiton coming to bat here in the bottom of the first, leading off with Caden Kappas. And Wapiton now threatening with two runners on at second and third with a double by Jackson Fleet. Yeah, right in the gap there, I thought that might roll all the way back to the wall. Yep. Squirts away, I think Ulick's going to make it home easily, and that speed shows there as he got home in time. Obviously, I like to, to be cocky, but I also would say that I have a good, a good cocky confidence. I know where the line is, um, and obviously sometimes with, with, with that, it, it, it can go different ways, but with, with that, absolutely. I would say I am a cocky, confident player on the baseball field, and I think that, <laughs> I think the guys on our team love that, though. I think it gets, it gets the energy going, you know, makes the atmosphere, sets the atmosphere at another level. Um, and it, it kind of just gets games going. The other teams didn't necessarily like that, um, but that's the kind of ball players that we were. Leaflet round and third, got Jets on, and he's gonna come in and score the tying run on the double RBI from Jaden King. Um, lots of bad blood with Castleton. Castleton won the uh, 2022 state championship. So they took that into this year, hoping that they would you know, make it back to back. So there's lots of little rivalries in there and a lot of, you know, bad blood, I would say. Swung on, pulled down to Timmy at third, bounces it off his chest, throw over to Hoffman. Got him! We've been working with Riley since he's 10 years old at third base, okay? When the last couple years, he's turned into a phenomenal third baseman. My opinion on Riley, uh, best third baseman in Class A, and, and I'll tell you right now, I also feel that he might be the best third baseman in the state of North Dakota. It's coming at me quick sometimes, and just hope and pray sometimes, and get my glove down, like Coach always says. If not, eat it off the chest. It's actually funny because a couple of years ago, I was when I was still kind of shaky at third, getting the ball in front of me, kind of scared of it a little bit. Coach actually made me uh, put on uh, catcher's gear. And he made me at 30 and he just chucked balls right at me, make me get in front of it, knock it down, nothing past me. And that actually went a long ways because the ball hits you, it hurts for, what, five seconds, and then you make the play and it's a whole bunch better. You don't even feel anything, so. The last year or two, he really turned it on over at third. I don't know, put in extra work, works harder at practice, but yeah, he's just attacking the ball. Um, the range too, he's diving for balls and everything. Even the ones he can't get to, he's diving for. I mean, it's awesome to see. I'm, I love knowing that I have a third baseman like that next to me. I mean, I'm gonna miss him. Kind of just lit a fire under, under our butts and went out and took two from second, third best team in the state. 
for the Haymakers in the top half of the seventh. No runs, no hits, no one left on base hit, no blocked in errors. And the nice thing about a small town like this with a team is I know every player, at least on the A and a lot of them on the B, um, by name and we can talk and, and, and that is just, um, you know, that, that's them giving back, I think. Look, I mean, look at how long these kids have played together. Are half of them nice kids? No, they all are. <laughs> Battle of Omaha Tournament. I want to thank you guys for tuning in and uh, hanging out with us. It's a nice Monday morning baseball. Doesn't get better than that. The home of baseball these uh, next few days and next few weeks, right, as the College World Series takes place just down the street at uh, Charles Schwab Stadium. It's Andrew Zimmel coming to you L-I-V-E live. Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, Colorado, and Alabama. We're known throughout the Midwest. Lead off triple to get this one underway. Troy yeah. Ulick steps to the plate. So a runner 90 feet away, Wobbin in China, strike first. Yeah. Dropped it on the outfield. Boy, oh boy, Wobbin coming out hitting hard. Comes set, the delivery. Ball in the inside corner, gets some look in the 6K for Caden Hawker. Wobbin wins this one after five, leading eight to zero. B92.7, another no hitter for Caden Hawker. We just made a statement right there, okay? Caden Hawker, no hitter, two games in a row. Oh, oh boy. I didn't even realize I was throwing a no-hitter that game. I was just, I was in shock again. I was like, that's two in a row. I never thought that I would throw a no-hitter and then to throw two in a row is that, it was a special moment for that to happen, so. Someone told me at the end of the sixth inning, I think it was, right when we went out to the field for the seventh, he's like, hey, he's throwing a no-hitter. And I was like, why'd you say that? <laughs> <laughs> it just feels, Special to me, even though I don't call most of my most of my whole game. Uh, coach does, I'm, unfortunately, or fortunately. <laughs> Depends how you look at it, but yeah. Uh, just feels crazy because you never expect it. Jaden King on the hill for Wobbin in post 20, the lefty, so a nice lefty on lefty battle. And Hammond knew when that pitch crossed the plate that he should have taken a cut at it. That's going to be the third K. What a play by Caden Kappis. Wobbin wins a tight one, four, three, and seven. A little change, I've got them way out front. <laughs> a little Nubville, USA. They're from Millville. That was called Nubville. <laughs> Take me out to the ball game, sung by Edward Meeker, Edison Record. <laughs> Casey was baseball mad, had the fever and had it bad, just to root for the hometown through every zoo, Casey Blue. On a Saturday, her young beau called to see if she'd like to go to see a show, but Miss Kate said no, I'll tell you what you can do. Take me out to the ball game, take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I never get back. The baseball is always fun, but some of those tournaments, you go there to win, but spending time and like the College World Series game, everyone being out, uh, hanging out in the hotel rooms with everyone, it's just always, because we've known each other for so long, I mean, know, I guess, everything about each other. So it's more like a family when we're hanging out more than anything than just a couple of friends. So it's always just really enjoyable. 
All right, hey, nice and loud. Let them hear us back home. All right, walk it on three, one, two, three. Walk it. Speed kills, okay, and we can put a lot of pressure on teams with our base running. We must have at least 60 steals already on the season. Who's got the best knuckleball on the yeah. team? Yeah. Gavin Stroder has a mean <laughs> knuckleball. I'd would his co would coach let you him throw it in the game? <laughs> Probably. Good pitch, Gavin. Hold the frame. Strike three. What's your favorite song? Favorite song? Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. What's your name? G Gavin Schroeder. That's my okay. name. What's your favorite song? Uh, I'll have to go uh, Gravity by John Mayer. What makes that your favorite song? Um, it's got that nice blues feel to it. Real chill. It's a okay. good song to chill to. Big Bird. Jaden. Uh, what's your name? Jaden King. What's your favorite song, Jaden? To be honest, I don't really know. You gotta know. I don't. You have, have to know. No. Yeah. But Curtis is not very good. No. Let's go, Nine no. Baby. Some, I'll say some little baby song. All right, some little baby song. Leaflet alone brought enough original, authentic yeah. content that we, we didn't really have to worry about writing a script of any sort. <laughs> Just for fun here, let's let's mention mm -hmm. Jackson Fleetfoot's 162 game average. He would have hit 60 doubles, 28 home runs, 216 RBIs. You know, I like hitting my triples, but I'm slow, so. <laughs> uh, yeah. The pitch, swing and a miss. Kyle Blader gets his second. You could have slid the Kent phone book under that. <laughs> hey, right now, let's go. Come on. We got Pick him up, guys. We've been in so many big games that should never matter for us, all right? We just stay loose, just do our thing, okay? We talk about it all the time. Do our thing, make teams play to our our level. Gavin Schroeder gave us enough out there, battled. Sky would come in and throw strikes. I thought we played pretty good defensively. We made it this far, we might as well go win the whole thing, all right? We're going to get to see a good baseball squad here in Billings. Let's show them how it's done here in Wapton, all right? Good job. Wapton on three, one, two, three. RT, you never know. I guess you do know. Oh no, that's gone. He's not gone. Well, we got score runs to win anyway. Here we go. So what? Shake it off. Let's go. This tournament right here, I'll tell you what. We became a lot better baseball team in the last uh, 10 days, okay? We had six big league games, and we come down here and played some pretty darn good competition, and I think we fared fairly well. So it's a true statement. I can only think of a handful of games that we've been beat by a better team. When we've lost games, mistakes. yeah, when we've lost games that we've beat ourselves. You know, yesterday we got beat by Billings, Montana. We got beat by a better team in that game. They played a better game than us. And so we tip our hats. So it was real important to get a couple games in today. It was nice that they were able to host us. Um, that's a better ball club than probably what we've seen today. Uh, we just played pretty good baseball, okay? We kind of eliminated them early. <laughs> Holy crap, Joe. Matter of fact, bases loaded hit, which might be the first time all season. I'd have to look way, way back to find it. I mean, I forget, it's been so long, I forgot take to take shirt my shirt off when it happened. So. Chin kit, two of them. Get down! All right, we're back here at John Randall Field, Botterstadt Stadium. One 
pitch. Now it's driven deep to left. Is that going to be enough? And it is. He's got two of them over the left field wall, almost in the same exact spot. And there's another one deep yeah. to left. And that one's gone as it just barely misses the light pole in left center field. So two home runs, two at bats here. The number three and number four hitter, Jackson Flevelet, and now Jaden King. Over the left center wall, makes the score 10 to nothing, and he'll get to wear the home run helmet. Doesn't fit, Joe. Team meets him at first base, at home plate. Barely goes on the top of his head, Joe. <laughs> I suppose he's got an adjustable headband. It's awesome, like, I love playing Breck, especially on July 4th, and it's getting dark out, the fireworks all around, it's awesome. It's a bunch of people here, you know, you gotta come out, do your thing, uh, show off for the fans. Do you remember seeing July 4th games as a kid? I do, I remember sitting there and just thinking that they're such big kids, and I wish I could be like them one day, and here I am. The border battle for us was kind of like a pitching duel, because we were gonna get their best, and they were gonna get our best, and then, it kind of just came down to whose bats are going to be on that night. And obviously, again, you have the home field advantage of John Randall. Um, you have a uh, majority of the Wapton fans coming down in the park, whether they're walking from their house a couple blocks away or they're driving into town. Just being down in that atmosphere, for me, is kind of what drew me to the game of baseball and being down at that field and you know spending so many years going to the 4th of July game and then playing in it. it it's always towards the top. I mean, competitive, everybody wants to play well and the fans, there's so many, it's always so much fun. Regular I.O., regular I.O. right now, regular I.O. Couple things. Hey, good practice, good energy, okay? Uh, I kind of want, the, the balls are gonna be harder, the ones are gonna get above the lights, and then the ones right at you, so that's why I try to hit a lot of, a lot of balls at you, line drive, more line drives through the I.O., okay? And, and guys, you can see we're struggling a little bit picking up the ball on cuts, depth perception, all right? So we're gonna have to be light on our feet and be athletic tomorrow, go get the ball, okay? Go attack the ball, go get it, all right? Yep. Here we go, let's get her tarped up, here we go. Lofton on three, one, two, three. Lofton. I haven't seen many other rivalry games, but I'll probably just say right now that there's probably not any other games like that that can, that can match the 4th of July game. It's a simple and lovable game, and one you can really get involved with. Something nostalgic about it, you know? There's probably not a summer that goes by if I don't drive down here that I don't get memories of playing on the field, and maybe even regrets, too. I don't get to play the the children's game anymore. We're all told that we can't play the game that we love. Whether you're told at 18 or, or, or 40, you know, we're all told. It's something and uh, it's not just a fireworks show, but it's also just a gathering for the communities, the two communities, Breckenridge and Wahpeton. Um, you know, I know that, that Breckenridge looks forward to it too as well and the traveling trophy that we give away. Um, I think it was 12 years is what it's yeah. been. And uh, it, it's just been fun to be a part of that in the booth as PA announcer. 
um, you know, and building up. Uh, we try to make a special deal out of it for veterans. Uh, it's it's a huge day for veterans too, and we try to make a, a special first pitch for veterans, you know, and, and do those kinds of things, ceremonial first pitches. I've been involved with that since Chris has developed this whole thing uh, for the past 12 years, and uh, it's. Uh, it is a spectacle, especially when you start to see the stands full and you get them up to swing Sweet Caroline with you and stuff, you know. To get them involved that way is uh, is a pretty special moment. The final pitch tonight will be a current player from Wampin Legion Post 20. Private first class, Sterling Warney. There you go. Good shot. Just stuff you never forget here at this beautiful baseball diamond. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Vaterstadt Stadium here at John Randall Field, and uh, welcome to Three Borders Sports Network. It's Independence Day 2023. I am Joe Schreiner, and I'm joined here in the booth by none other than Brian Watson. B-Dub. Happy 4th, Joe. B-Dub, I think we're about ready to go. Man, we're 4th of July. We're ready to go. This is going to be a good one. How about this? Hey, don't try it today. Don't try it today. Oh, your gloves are gas right now. There we go. That's a call strike three, and Snyder knew it, and uh, another Carlson family insurance strike out. Peter, not curveball. Well, had stood no chance. Stood absolutely zero chance. Jesus. Wogelbacher delivers and slapped right back up the middle for a base hit. Ulick and Cap is going to round third, hustling toward home. Nope. He gets held up there with Tori Ulick over at first, and it's cut off. And the 3-1 pitch. Leaflet turns on it to third base, and it's going to be a bad hop to Consenius at third. Kappas will score. There's a call strike three on the outside edge, and Caden Hawker records his fourth Carlson Family Insurance strikeout. Swung out on this strike three, five strikeouts here in a row. Swing and a miss, and strike three, and six in a row. Way that the shot looks. And there's a drive deep to left. I can't see it behind the pole there, Brian. Is it gone? It is! Gone. And Gavin Schroeder, the number eight hitter in the lineup for Wapitan, drills one over the left field wall for a home run, and he is one happy young man. Yeah, we talked about the power at the top of the order, but you can't forget about the guys down there at the bottom that sometimes do a lot of the dirty work laying down bunts, and Gavin Schroeder knocking that one way over the wall in left field. Sets up in the outer half. Cam Nito takes a swing at it, pops it to right center, and it's going to drop for a double at least with Cam Speed right at the base of the 372 mark. And Earth's going to whistle for home, throw his high, and did he get him? As Earth slides in under the tag. Well, there's King with a drive to left, and he'll get the base hit. So Jaden King. Gets a single. Riley T up. Riley T drives it deep to left center field. Has it got enough? And it does not. But it lands in between Nito and Sanchez. And round in third and headed home yeah. is Hawker. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, boy. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Yahoo! Be a sick play. All right, perfect. There we go. That will be the end of your game here as Wapitan wins by the 10 run rule. They win 11 to one on the Kappas' infield single. Forces Jack Rittenauer to come home and score the winning goal. As Wapitan comes into town, Wapitan post 20, uh, Wapitan, North Dakota taking on the Kindred Viking. Here in an American Legion, A Legion matchup. Um, so there's, lot, there's lots of interesting bad blood. Kindred knows this documentary is happening, you know. <laughs> Ah, 
Jaden King on the mound. War Wapitan is having himself a day. He's throwing a shutout through six innings. Let's go, baby. Aw. There we go. <laughs> it's a barrel party, baby. Yeah, Let's go. Listen, listen to me. Grab a ball with the gap right now. We're looking to hit something by that light yep. Okay. Sit back. Freeze on the Let's line. Go, Hard on the ground. Freeze on the line. Anything in the air, we're taking up right away. Out of boy. Good pitch. Dude, that change is nasty. That's a nasty change. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right, let's go. Hey, let's, hey, let's not be done here. Let's not let's be go. done right now. Come on, tack a couple more on. Let's go. Keep swinging the let's bat. Go. I like that. Hey, I'm liking this barrel part. Wapitan leads it by a score of 12 to 0. 12 runs, 14 hits, no errors for Wapitan. Touch it, touch it, toy, touch it, toy, touch it, toy. That boy, there you go. There we go. Head coach for Wapton did get tossed out of a game while he was in Kindred. Oh. Whoa. 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 Misses up and in, three balls and no strikes. Second three ball count. That side doesn't come out very often, but when it comes out, he knows that he's right and he needs to back us up or else something bad is gonna happen to us, like us getting kicked out. So he usually goes and takes the fall. I don't, I don't even know what he was doing. He was in the ump's face and then all of a sudden he was standing behind home. If he was maybe trying to point out where the pitches were, but I, don't, I just, I hadn't seen him get fired up at an ump like that in a long time. And, Getting his money worth here. Chris Kappas again, not happy with the home plate umpire, and he's been thrown out of the ball game. I am the home baseball. All right, he's gone. There is no way he ump's called. We were all just pissed, and we were. Because we, we did feel like Caden was getting squeezed. I mean, there was calls down the middle. And um, I don't like to complain about umpires, but, I mean, we were really getting squeezed that game, and we were just pissed on the mound. Well, I'm not going to lie. I've never seen a coach get so fired up and passionate about his team. That was, that was pretty sweet. I feel like for all of us, that was the spark we needed because I felt like we were a little bit sluggish right away in the first inning, and I felt like he really he fired us up and got us going, and we really just wanted a win for him. So I was like just devastated on the mound. I called Jackson out to cool me off. He got out there and I was like, I can't do this, dude. I'm so pissed. And then I see my dad coming out of the dugout. Didn't know what he said at the time, but heard after he said, I'm out or I'm out of here. I didn't really know what to think of it because I haven't really seen that. Um, but it, it just fueled us even more. I mean, with him leaving the game, um, with that happening and him going in the umpire's face, it just... It, we had to win that game. That was a must-win game right there. And then once he came off the field, we knew that we had to win that game for him. We knew we had to go out there and compete. That should light a fire under our asses. Did it? Did yeah. It? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We were ready. Yeah! They, they were a good team. I mean, some of them like to talk, so that always gets you going. And then their post-game selfie on our field was always something we remembered. Emotions were running high that game, and we got them. And whenever a team likes to talk and you know you're the better team, you try and really take advantage. And then we weren't really the team to say anything back on social media. We were always focused more on the field, and that's where we took care of it. I mean, who would be the guys who would take exception to things the most? Jackson Fleetfoot. Ten times out of ten. 
I think he could ask every person on our team. If somebody is going to talk, it's going to be him. But he could always back it up. So, I mean, he's never doing it in a way to be a disrespectful player, but just the way he played the game. We took the boots to him that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Get a lap in around here. Stay away from him. Keep the motion. All right. Nice and loud. Lofting on three. One, two, three. Lofting. Well, first of all, I, I mean, I don't. It's nothing that, uh, as a coach, I'm, I'm not proud of being ejected by any means. What it comes down to is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna defend my team and I'm gonna defend my players. And 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 I think if you question or ask anybody what a, co a good coach does, they're gonna say that's that's exactly what we're looking for, you know. And uh, I'll, I'll lay down for those guys at any time. And and that's why I let them know at all times that if there's a question or whatever, you let me handle that. That's not their job to do. That's that's my job as a coach to do. So no hitter, extremely small strike zone. You're on the bus, and then they go, they throw them back. Well, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch it much, you know. So, but, uh, um, you know, but talking to Coach Hawker and Coach Schroeder afterwards, they're just like, man, it, it just sparked the team. They just locked in. And Can you remember that he was very flustered? Oh, absolutely. Hey, that mound is a lonely place out there, you know, and, and when you're when you're sitting there dealing and you're throwing strikes that typically are called strikes and you're not getting it, hey, umpires are humans, right? They're going to miss one or two here and there, right? I wonder we're consistently missing, and, uh, you know, when the, when the when the one of the runners gets down to first base and tells our first base, yeah, I was struck out, and, it, and it's a four-pitch, or it's a four balls and one strike, and he says, I was struck out. We have a problem there, so like I said, uh, I'll go out and defend my team, and, and it's all water under the bridge now. And the home of the we have Wapaton post 20 and the Fargo post 400 Astros on deck here for you right now. Now having the center fielder number 20, Tori. Yeah, that's buddy. Come on, 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 buddy. And a ball that was originally going foul somehow drifted back into fair territory with the slight breeze that's out there. Hockert's gonna go to left center. And diving for it was Mathiasen. King records his seventh strikeout of the game. We'll roll all the way to the warning track. He picks up the phone and says, hey, you know what? Somebody stole something from you. But they're always looking at their dugout. Kappis, the new pitcher here for Wapton post 20. Base hit the left field, and that will tie the game. Kate Mathiasen comes in, rounding second is Chase Lur. The play at the plate, and he's out, and we are tied. And that one's going to third, or left field, and chasing after it, making the knee sliding catch is Skyler Blado, and that will strand two runners on base, and we remain tied after five and a half. Braxton Paul, he'll get a chance to warm up to the first number one song of 1984, Corey Hart's Sunglasses at Night. The sunglasses. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I have to ask, did you kind of wear them out there to maybe get in the team's heads a little bit? You know, knowing you're going to have to take them off, but you always went out to warm up in them anyways. Yeah, I feel like it really helped because then, like, they're, like, the, the batters, they're always trying to like, get your timing down and stuff. And then as I'm going, I'm throwing, they're getting their timing down. And all of a sudden, the umpire comes out and says, oh, you got to take them off. And then me and coach try to make a little bit of a big deal about it, try to waste some more time. And then they start to get in their heads a little bit. And then I go back out there and I do my best. So there's strategy involved, you'd say? A little bit, I guess. There's another strikeout from Braxton Pauley, and for Wapton pitchers, that's the 10th batter struck out. Hard hit ball, it's a base hit to left field, and Hockert's on base. Finally, I sat back and I, I hit it I hit it hard in between the shortstop and third baseman, and I was like, I need a hit here, or otherwise I'm gonna be getting DH for or something. So I'm just like in my head, and I finally got a hit, and I was like, all right, let's win the game. 
Runners will advance to second and third with nobody out. And now a visit to the mound here for the Astros as they are in some trouble. And he hit them. And now the bases are loaded with nobody out on the hit by a pitch to Schroeder, bringing up Jack Rittenauer. A hit into right field. That's going to bring in Caden Hawkard, and Wapiton wins it. Walk off, bottom of the tenth, six to five. And what a tough loss for the Fargo Post 400 Astros, as they had Wapiton on the ropes, looking to potentially hand them their first loss of the season. But the nothing to hang their head about here. They came in and they played their they, they played their hearts out, and they just came up a little bit short. Step up and be that guy. Jack Rittner, you stepped up and been that guy today, okay? When you didn't have a single hit today through 10 innings. A thing our coaches always say, don't let teams stick around. Don't play to their level. Play above them and just get it over with, basically. And just kept going and then finally in the 10th inning, Base were loaded, I don't know, nobody out. And God, I think I was 0 for 4 that game. Came up and just trying to put the ball in play and good things happened, so. The nerves were always there, but I feel like if you don't play with any nerves, you're not playing the game the right way. But I was more excited for the opportunity to end it, with that being said, because, I don't know, going 0 for 4 and then coming up there thinking, Oh, I haven't done anything, but that wasn't really my mindset. It was, we got to end this right now. It's time for this game to be over. And my goal was to put the ball in play and make them make a play, but it all worked out in the end. Basically, it was even better. And these teams that are sitting around here chirping and, and excited for wanting us to get beat, they better be careful what they wish for because they just woke a sleeping giant. Let's turn things over to the broadcast booth. The pregame show starts now. All right, welcome back. It's game three of four of the day here between Washington Post 20 and West Fargo Vets. The winner of this game will play in the championship game tomorrow. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Enjoy. Deep enough for a three run home run. Get up, ball. Second home run of the tournament. This one a three-run blast to left center off the bat of Josiah Hoffman. Let's go. I mean, Joey, he's, he may be one of the pickiest eaters I know, like. Dude's diet consists of cheese curds, chocolate cake, and I don't know, water, chocolate milk. It's insane. That's all he eats, and he's a big dude. He's got a lot of power behind his swing, and I mean, he might hit the ball the hardest out of the whole team. For example, you have Caden Hawker. It's 90 degrees in Omaha. He's throwing a no-hitter. It's pouring rain in the region tournament. He's throwing a two-hitter. There was no ebbs and flows, really, no up and down. Yeah, he, he, he stole the show on the mound for us. Um, he did great. <laughs> I mean, when you talk about Bulldog, though, you talk about Caden Hawker. I mean, that is the definition of a guy that's just going to go up there and get the job done. You watch him on the mound, and he's just that confidence on the mound, that swagger he has on the mound. It carries him. It absolutely does. He has a good swagger on the mound that, I, that you don't see um, in Legion Ball. You just don't see that. Let's look at how these two teams stack up. Wapton, 20-0, undefeated on the season, on the regular season conference play. West Fargo, 12-8, and 1-0 in the tournament. Come on, Come on, Jack! Come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. Come on Jack. 
And once again, we'll have the third place and the championship game tomorrow. And then we have two more games today. So four games remain of this tournament. And now the only thing left to decide is uh, who's going to be the one seed and who's going to be the two seed at the state tournament. One thing that stood out to me clear as day prior to that region championship game was Castleton was kind of lounged out like a day at the beach and Wapaton was in Castleton's batting cage, maximizing every rep. The previous game was in extra innings and Castleton was playing spectator. Uh, Wapaton was locked in getting prepared for the game. We know that it is the West Fargo Vets who will be the three seed. And that's your ball game, third place. And the final spot in the state tournament. They were taking cut after cut after cut. It just kind of embodied the type of team they were working up until the very first pitch. If there is some extra time, then hey, why not? What's it hurt going and getting a few extra swings in, right? It's only going to get you better. Keep you loose, keep you focused on, on what's, what's coming up, um, keep you locked in. Um, that's what sets us apart from a lot of teams. We, we pride ourselves on those little things. We pride ourselves on preparation. Game 2 and 0 in the tournament. They've struck out 19 batters. They've outscored their opponents 16 to 5. For Wapiton, for Wapiton, post 20, leading off the pitching, 4 5, Hayden Tappas. As their first hit and their first runner on base. Out at second. That takes the runner off as Macau gets picked off. Jack Rittenauer, he's gonna score. Tori Ulick will round third from second, he will score. And it's Jackson Cleveland with a two run double to right field. And Wapiton takes the first lead of the game. It's two nothing. They're drawing the heart and they're punching the <laughs> hole through it. But, you know, they're, they're uh, stirring the pot. They're doing all these celebrations. And the main thing is they're having fun. Two. Now it's popped up going to right field and in foul territory they're chasing after. Nice catch! Josiah Hoffman from first base makes a wonderful running grab for the first down of the inning. We kind of just threw him at first base here two years ago after um, Ethan kind of said he was done with baseball and parted ways. Just threw him there at that position and he's worked his ass off. Excuse my French. I hope he comes back and plays for me next year too. Finish him! Yeah. 
congratulations to Wapaton. Wapaton post 20 or 2023. East region champ. Day one, there's a fine line between confidence and cockiness, okay? We ain't gonna be cocky. We don't have to be cocky, okay? We should reek of confidence. You guys have won so many baseball games and big games, you should get into that box with nothing but confidence. You should be on that mound with nothing but confidence. You should want every ball hit to you when you're in the field. Give me the ball, okay? <laughs> and and people don't like it because you guys win, okay? They don't like it because you win. You do everything right, you're a top-notch, high-class ball club, but they don't like you because you win, okay? Well, you know what? Then they better come and beat us because we ain't gonna drop to anybody's level. You keep playing up here and make them play up here. Okay. We need to polish this freaking automobile. We need to polish her up this week and be ready to go and show her how pretty she is. All right? Listen, walked it on three. Get a lap around. Yeah. Stay away from him. Wapaton will be the number one seed heading into the state tournament. It seemed like nobody really liked us all year. It was like Wapaton against the world, you know? We just went out there, first game of the tournament against Watford. Went to go do our thing. I mean, we wanted to take it one game at a time, you know. Didn't overlook them at all. No, we were uh, we came out swinging. You're watching American Legion State Tournament, State A Legion Tournament from Kindred, North Dakota. We're getting set. We're excited to bring you uh, baseball, American Legion baseball, and magnitude sports. Aiden Hockett will be on the mound for Wapaton post 20. His battery mate, Jackson Fleefoot, behind the dish, catching, and we're getting set to play some baseball. Swing and a high fly ball in the center field. This ball's hit pretty well. In trouble for the center fielder, and it's over his head. Hoffnagel had trouble with it. And now there's going to be a run. Runner's tied up. The runner's going to have to go back to second base. They're charging at him. And now they're going to get the runner in between home and third. And now the ball sails into center field. One run scores. A second run comes in to score. Watford City throwing the ball around. There was some confusion as the ball sailed over the center fielder's head. Two runs came around to score on the play. Here's a line drive base hit into right field. Kappas will come around to score on the RBI single by you. Here's the one-two pitch, swinging a hard ground ball over to third, and takes a wicked bounce over the third baseman's glove. A couple of runs are going to score. It's got to be a base hit. Uh, nobody made an error on that play. Ball took, uh, kind of hit that lip and took a wicked bounce over the third baseman's head. And two runs come across as Hoffman has his second hit of the ball game. And two runs batted in. The one two pitch. Fastball swung on a miss, strike three. Hawker picks up his fifth strikeout. Swing at a high fly ball, hit very hard out to left field. That's way back there, and she is gone. That ball was crushed, and Fleetfoot has himself a two run home run. A deep drive into left field on the first pitch, and it's 15 to nothing in favor of Wapiti. Here's a line drive towards the gap in the left field. That's going to fall in there for a hit. One run's going to come across the score, and Brewer's going to try to get into second base, and he does. I think we'll give him a double on that. Picture they've seen, I don't know. Okay, they're facing Jaden King today. Jaden King throws strikes, they're gonna have a hard time. Okay, now 
if that happens, my, my call is they could try to go small ball on us. So expect that. Be ready for it at all times, small ball. Okay. And the other thing is this: yesterday they ran our, or not yesterday, but in the East Region they ran our, they ran our, uh, our play where we send everybody in motion. Okay. So if we're on base, we don't fall for our own play. Okay. Know what's going on. You start seeing that. Okay. Don't fall for our own play. Okay. Let's go. Let's have it. We had the vets again. We knew, we knew they were solid. They were hot. We just took them right out of the game right away in East Region, and they played a good game against us too. They, they kind of rocked Jaden too. Bring the energy. Bring the energy. A lot of chatter. Be talk. Let's have a we day. Do. Let's, Let's go, boys. Go, 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 go. One, two, three, team. That one sent it to left. Gets past the left fielder. They'll send one in. One to third. That'll be a double for Gunderson, RBI double. That one, deep into center. We caught by the right fielder. They'll look to get him at home. He'll make it safely. And that'll come in for the first strikeout of the game and that'll end the inning, leaving one on base, two runs, three hits, And that absolutely sent into center. Center fielder will pick it up, send it to the pitcher. There'll be a play at home and he'll be safe. So an RBI single, scoring Glinky. That'll strike him out for the second out. And the fourth batter struck out for the Vets. Swing at that for a strikeout. One and one. That absolutely knocked into center. Will drop for at least one. They'll send one home, they'll send two home. There'll be a play, but he'll make it safe. Two RBI double, good for two runs. Swing and a line drive, base hit, left field, that'll score the tying run. An unearned run, of course, because the runner reached on that error. So you look with an RBI single, smash out to left field, trying to extend this inning is whopping in post 20. Here's a high fly ball hit deep to left center field. This ball's hit well, and back it goes. It's off the fence. And King just took the lead for Wapitan, and they have their first lead of this ball game on a high deep fly ball into left center field and off the fence, in fact, RBI double. It's a good one. Here's a 2-1 pitch hit high in the air to center field. This ball's hit pretty well. Back it goes. It's and it gone. is gone. Do it ties a ball game with a high drive home run to almost straight away center field. And this ball game is tied. A two-out solo bomb for Do It. And like Chris just said, Do It did it. Go in the inning, go. Here, right? Go score, score or a run. Listen, go score or run. And we, when we hold them, everybody wants the ball. Let's go. Find a way, do your jobs right now. Let's go. Come, Come on. Right now, runs on three. One, two, three. He do. He do. And here's the 3 0 pitch from Glanke. Missed somewhere. So we're going to call that a walk. And Wapitan, just like that, takes a big lead. Suicide squeeze. Is, not, is going to be very successful as Glanke fielded it with his glove, tried to throw it home with his glove, and two runs are going to come across the score on the air. Here's a ground ball pounded up to short. Throw across the diamond in time, and West Fargo goes down one, two, three in the top of the seventh inning, and this ball game is over. Wapitan wins it by a score of eight to four.
quite start off as, as we wanted, as we would script or as we would draw up, right? But that, that's a good baseball. We beat them four times now this year. It is hard to continue to beat the team over and over and over, right? And they came out once again. They don't have pressure. They're unbeaten. Suppose, according to everybody, they're not supposed to win, okay? So they play loose. They got to come and play loose, and, and if things happen, great. If they don't, well, that's what everyone said was supposed to happen, right? It's a state tournament. People lock in. They're swinging the bats pretty well, okay? They jump up on us, get us 3 nothing lead. We're tight at the plate right away. But then we start to chip away, okay? You guys have put yourself in a position throughout the season to be the one seed going into the East, be the one seed in state, and that is huge because we're the home team, all right? We got last at bats all the time. Nice and loud so they hear us back home. Lofton on three, one, two, three. First pitch he sees, send it into center, it'll go deep, all the way to the fence, and he'll make at least one, and he'll make it standing to second for the first hit to the game. He'll bunt that, send one home, he'll make it, they'll send off to first, and they'll get the out at first. That pitch to the shortstop. What a ball game, folks. That shortstop, Caden Hawker. I mean, I'm never going to forget this game at shortstop, especially it was my last game at shortstop. And that backhand in the hole, and I fielded that, and I just, I just let her buck. And I was like, I was just like, I just made that play. Like, it just, it was like an awe moment. Out of the park, good for the first home run of the game. That's a solo home run for the catcher, number seven, Jackson Cleveland. Second home run of the tournament. Way to take care of business. Proud of you guys, okay? You just punch your, your uh, ticket to uh, playing in the state championship, okay? But now, now that doesn't mean that we take we go on cruise control tomorrow, okay? We need to win tomorrow and then make it so we have to be beat twice the next day, okay? We got to take care of business tomorrow. Bubba, you're, you're towing the rubber tomorrow, okay? Take care of business tomorrow. We got Castleton, all right? Go right after him. Keep playing our game, okay? If the board was still on, it shows 10 hits, 7 runs. We scored the first 5 innings, which is damn good, okay? Um, <clears throat> there isn't a lot of things I can say that didn't, didn't go well that game other than we, we finally got our, our, our first air of the tournament. So, Jack, you got eight poles tonight. No, I'm just kidding. Shows that we're human, right? Because what happened the next one? Hocker, unbelievable day at shortstop for us. Okay, makes the next play. That a boy. Caden Kappas, Bulldog on the mound, 88, pitch complete game. Okay. Hey, I'll tell you what. What do, what do we got here? You guys got anything? Yeah, yeah, hold on, listen now. Listen, we'll talk about it on the way home, everything for tomorrow. But hey, be damn happy and proud of yourselves right now. But remember, we got a lot of baseball left, okay? We got to take care of it tomorrow, and then we play the next day, okay? We haven't won anything yet, okay? We've just put ourselves in a very good position. Let's get our lap in here, nice and loud so they hear us back home, all right? We had a nice support today. Let them hear us, okay? Wapton on three, one, two, three. Braxton uh, started the year um, when we got him on the mound. You could tell he was a little bit nervous, um, but he was never going to shy away from from taking the ball. And uh, as a coach, I mean, I love that. And he, he was a guy that we absolutely counted on. And, and as we got in, we, we had an idea of what we want to do rotation-wise. And um, we got to that game, and he threw against Castleton. Paulie's a guy that's going to let you know after after he does something good on the mound. He's a guy that's going to show emotion out there, and that's what that's what I like to see. I love it because there's always a chance to succeed. It's just, it's such a fun game, and the fans are awesome. This program's awesome. The coaches, the experience, the team. My dad has been there since day one for me. He's pretty much been my coach up to right now. Just every off-season, spring, he's there for me. He always tweaks the little things for me and helps me out a lot. Because my dad always had faith in me, and he always, like three years ago, we set a goal, me and him 
that my junior year is when I would like make A and I'd be there a little bit and then like my senior year is when I would really like shine and that's when I would like do it and I would like be on the team and be a part of the team and I feel like we did that. Your pregame ritual about saying a prayer, um, what was that again? So before every game, like right before we do IL, I like to just kind of separate myself from the group a little bit and say Our Father, Hail Mary and Glory Be just to get my head set straight and just gain my graces with God before the game and just like make sure everybody is safe and healthy and everything like that. You could say that he was looking at Yes, he was looking after me very much. Getting down the home stretch here in the state class A Legion baseball tournament from Viking Varsity Diamond in Kindred as we are down to the final three could be two standing when we get into tomorrow's championship could potentially be three we got zero pressure we're in the big game okay you play loose have fun bring the energy take care of business here right. they can beat us twice tomorrow okay? right. throw strikes attack the ball a lot of communication all right Good approach to the play. Let's have a game. Here we go. Team yeah, on three. One, two, three, two. Let's go. You can buy them at the third base ticket. Go to first, and they picked him off. Rotten picked off. Ollie had been keeping a watchful eye on him, and big move to pick him off there. Here's the one, two. Got it. Step it up for the basketball. For the Haymakers at the top of the second inning. No runs. And the pitch on the way. Ground ball. Out to deep short. Down to one knee Mitchell. They'll throw to third and safe there. A run is home and Wapiton leads 1 0. Fielder's choice and a run batted in for Schroeder. Dakota, ground ball to third. It is a fair ball played behind the bag, and the throw to first in time for the out to end the inning. Nicely done, Timmy. And a long throw in right on target to retire the side. Out of the fifth. Ground ball through the hole, base hit, left field. Rittenauer's at third. Chris Kapp is a wave him in. Wussy did not field it cleanly. We'll have to throw it back into second. Fleetfoot delivers. An RBI single. 2 0 Wapiton. Let's go. Line drive to center, hit well. That sends Ricotta back. It's deep, it's over his head. Into the wall in deep center field. Two runs have scored. Hoffman, a two out, two run double, and Wapiton leads four to nothing. That feels like an early dagger here in the fifth. In the air to right. Drifting back is Gore, gets turned around and cannot make the play. Goes off his glove in deep right field. Late break at third, Timmy, and they'll send him home. He may have a chance. Throw to the plate, not held. Runner scores. It's 5 0. Poppadin, three outs away. Swing and a miss there to strike out. There's one away. Line drive, just out of the reach of Kappas. Base hit left field. Haymakers are on the board. Here's the pitch. High fly ball to left, towards the corner. Long run for Schroeder, and dives, can't get it. Fair ball. It is in play at the wall. Two runs will score. Mitchell has a two-run double. The Haymakers still breathing. 6-3 Wapiton. And the delivery. Ground ball, out to Kappas at short, fields cleanly, on to first low. Picked by Hoffman and Wapiton, on to the championship, and there will be a new champion for 2023. The final two tomorrow at high noon here in Kindred. Six to three, your final. Okay. No. All right, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> awesome, fellas, way to play the game, okay? Way to show up, take care of business, and put ourselves in the best position possible, okay? Now, obviously, we're not done, okay? We have to win a baseball game tomorrow, <laughs> preferably in game one. Take care oh, of business boys. right away. Show up, first pitch, to the last out in game one, take care of business right away. Get a great night's sleep tonight, fluids in you, get a lot of rest, say a prayer to the baseball gods, and be ready to rock tomorrow, okay? You show them Wapton baseball at its finest tomorrow. You've put yourself in a spectacular position. you played your asses off all season long. Now finish her on a high note, okay? Right. I'm damn proud of you. I can't say anything more. 
Okay. Other than Rax and Polly, what a <laughs> jam. <laughs> Hey, great job, great job. Okay, coaches, got anything? You know what I'm gonna say, enjoy this one, but we wake up tomorrow and what we do? Turn the page. Turn the page and we win the damn game. game. Win the day, right? win the day. Okay, win the day, let's go. Okay, hold on, anybody else? Good job. All right, ah. hey, let's get a lap in, baby. Nice and loud, let them hear us back home, all right? We got a lot of fans, we're gonna have a lot of fans tomorrow, okay? Here we go, Wapped it on three, one, two, three. Baseball is really meant for summer. Legion baseball's got to be one of the best seasons all year, year round, every year. Just being around them guys, it's just they're such a fun group of kids to be around, and the coaches, they're awesome. It's just everything's just sweet. Kept the train rolling, like Chris said. We just we just kept it going and took it right into the state tournament. Oh, uh, seeing them grow into you know, yeah, fundamental. You're gonna bring a tear to my eye because when I talk about these guys. They're special. There's a lot of kids that don't understand that. And I think it's been brought up in these guys that that's what they need to do. And they do a good job of it. the game they're state champions and there isn't a better feeling than watching your guys run and get into a dog pile you know I mean that's that's uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling you see the excitement you see all that work all season long the time they put in and stuff and they get to celebrate it out there like like five-year-olds right I'll take it, bum rushing first base too, and going and tackling Jack, that's awesome too. But yeah, that was sweet. It's a great feeling to be able to see, um, you know, to be able to, to high five and, and give hugs to my coaches. Um, you know, all that time that you put in all that, all that stuff and it pays off for that. Uh, yeah, it's, 
I'll tell you what, that's a feeling that uh, it never gets old, that's for sure. I don't care if it's your first time or your tenth time, it's, it feels just as good. How does it feel to, uh, to have that support of being that guy in, in, the, in the game, the last game for it all? No, I was really hoping I could be able to pitch in the state championship, and it happened, and it's a good feeling when you come out with a win. So just a special group, all the chemistry that we've played, that we have, and yeah. we've played since we were like nine years old with these guys, and I'm glad to come out with the state championship on our last game. What's it like having your dad as a coach? How does it feel to share the moment with him, though? You know, he doesn't show a lot of emotion, and today I actually saw him show some emotion, and it, I liked it. I said that earlier, and I've said that to a few guys. I said this was the exclamation point, you know. And again, it's not cockiness, but it's just been that good of a season. Yeah. And uh, it was the exclamation point on the season, and uh, on a lot of their careers. You may have already. He may have already said it. He might have said it in the post-game speech, and I. You, you probably know what I'm going to say here, but um, he was obviously over the moon for us when we won the Midwest Plains Tournament. But the one thing that he said that I think it'll stick with me and it'll stick with everybody else for probably a lifetime was, if this is your greatest achievement when you're 30 years old, which I am now, um, you're probably doing something wrong. You're probably not taking the risks that you should be taking. Um, you're probably not doing what you should be doing. Bottom line, there's gonna be bigger and better things they're gonna do in life, okay? They're gonna go out and they're gonna hopefully be, uh, have great careers uh, in, the, in the workforce. Um, probably a lot of them are going to become uh, uh, great husbands and fathers someday and eventually grandparents or grandfathers. Um, you know, I want to hear all their success stories. You know, I want to, I want to, I wanna, you know, and I, and I get it already right now, you know, when they're going jobs, can I use you, coach, can I use you for a reference and stuff like that? Yeah, I want to be a reference down the road for them. I want to get invites uh, to their weddings. I want to know when they have uh, children, those, those great things that they do in life. I want to hear all about that. I want to hear those stories. And, and, and if there's ever a time they're struggling, I want them to pick up the phone and say, coach, I need some advice. I need some coaching. I need some life coaching, right? Because it's more than uh, what we do um, on the field. As a coach, I've always talked about when we go to places, I want to give these guys opportunity or experiences that they don't necessarily get uh, without playing baseball. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy as heck. They, they're going to go down there and waft in history, right? Um, they can look back, and these guys played on this state championship team and that state championship team, um, all that stuff. But uh, as they become uh, young adults and, and young men, you know, there's going to be bigger and better things. And, and uh, this is something that no one can ever take away, you know, but let's, let's build on that resume. Let's, let's build that resume. So, um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to what they can do because it's, I tell you what, it's a great group of young, young men, no, no question about it.
Just like that, that's a wrap. Post 20, boys this summer, signing off.